everyone. This is Lauren Steiner with the Robust Opposition, and I am here in my own living room at a fundraiser for Gail McLaughlin. And Jimmy Dore is going to be joining us soon. Gail is going to speak, and then I'm going to do a conversation with Jimmy Dore. So, guys, I want to welcome you to my home, and I want to uh, welcome Gail McLaughlin. to make some remarks about her uh, background, about her platform, and about what she plans to do when she becomes uh, Lieutenant Governor. Thank you. Thank you all so much for coming. Thank you, Lauren, for those wonderful words. You're always so inspiring. You do such great work. by saying, you know, as you know, my name's Gail McLaughlin, and I'm the former two-term mayor of Richmond, California. I've served uh, 13 years in office in Richmond, California, um, as a corporate free elected official. <laughs> and I'm also a co-founder of the Richmond Progressive Alliance. <laughs> Founder of the Richmond Progressive Alliance, I know what it, I know what it's like to be on the front lines where idealism meets policy. Yes. You know, it's it's really really not pie in the sky. It's not a pipe dream. We really really can make change. It's it's very feasible. Yes. And I also know that you know what. You know what it takes and what it feels like to make power in collaboration with others. We did this in Richmond and we could do it all over the state. And yes. you know something? It's a time when none of us can stand on the sidelines. You know, it's just one of those situations that we're all gonna have to keep rowing. There's some <laughs> rough seas, you know, but we're gonna get there as long as as long as we keep uh, rowing. We're not there's no waiting for the storm to pass, you know? We're, we're in this, and we've got to keep it going, and we will. Because why? We live in California, and we know California has, has really been on the cutting edge of, of you know, putting forward truly um, radical you know, ideas and implementing them. I mean, we were on the cutting edge of things like immigration rights, civil rights, um, on the cutting edge of gay marriage and uh, environmental rights. So we really know how to dream big and we know how to make those dreams reality. So, so um, I just tell you a little bit about Richmond. So Richmond is a city across the bay from San Francisco, um, very diverse city. It's a majority people of color community. Um, and it's a city before the Richmond Progressive Alliance, uh, we call ourselves the RPA. This is the organization that I co-founded in Richmond um, with you know, several others. Um, it's it's be before the RPA, Richmond had this terrible reputation. We have this big oil refinery, the Chevron oil refinery, <laughs> so we were known for our pollution in Richmond, known for our crime, a, a poorer community, and uh, oftentimes we see in poor urban communities a lot of street crime because of the lack of opportunity, a lot of poverty, health problems, etc. And now nobody was doing anything about changing it. So the city was spiraling downward for, for decades, really. And the whole city council was in the pockets of Chevron. Right. That Chevron had purchased city council members, or the city council members were <coughs> intim intimidated by this oil giant. So they were not making uh, you know, any moves that would trigger any um, bad response for she from Chevron. You know, it was a corporate model that the city council was putting into effect. So we, many of us activists in Richmond, came together and said, we're going to become the leaders we're waiting for. You know, we had had enough. We weren't getting things done just by you know, talking to the city council members at the public podium. That's all very important. 
But we decided we needed people sitting at the dais. Mm -hmm. You know, we still needed the community leaders and activists, but we also needed people sitting on the dais who would stand shoulder to shoulder with the community mm -hmm. and, you know, vote for the, the people's needs. And so I was the first um, uh, corporate free council member elected in 2004, <coughs> and then I ran in 2006 for mayor after two years. Uh, on the council and then was re-elected as mayor in 2010 and then I turned out as mayor in 2014 and decided to run again for city council to keep the work going. So for 13 years um, through July of last year I was on the city council implementing, working hard to implement a people's agenda. And I wasn't the only one. I mean I was the first corporate free um, elected official but by November 2016 we, the RPA, held and hold now five corporate free seats on the city council. city council seats, you're a total yeah. of seven, that's a super majority. So we totally changed the composition of the council. But you know, the political change that we made, you know, was very important. You needed that to, to do the other things you need to do. But the, the those other things are to change the quality of life for the people in your city, in your community. And so some of the things that we were able to do over the years um, were things like implement uh, a minimum wage increase to $15 an hour. We passed the first new rent control law in 30 years in California. We, um, we got over $100 million in additional taxes from Chevron. Mm -hmm. Now that came with a lot of community wow. pressure. We passed a ballot measure that you know, gave them, um, that would have taxed them you know, significant millions every year. They took us to court, Chevron took the city to court and won on a technicality, but we were going forward with another ballot measure yes. to fix that technicality. And so they, they knew we had the people at our side, so they came um, to a negotiated settlement with the city nice. of over 100. limited their pollution. Right now we're suing them in court for a massive fire at the refinery in 2012. So all these bold moves came because we weren't afraid to think and dream big and, and push back hard. Um, we also reduced crime dramatically, a 75% reduction in homicides in the city over the eight years. That can happen when you give people opportunities, fill up your community centers with recreation programs, and, and you know you help out your public schools. We gave three million dollars to our school district to keep small schools open. Um, we also you know defended our immigrant community. We're a sanctuary <coughs> city. Yeah. Yeah. Community Choice Energy Program, where our residents get cleaner, greener, and cheaper um, sources of electricity. Yeah. Yeah. So these, are just part, these are just part of um, the, or just some of the accomplishments we made in Richmond. Um, and to segue into why I'm running for Lieutenant Governor, it's it has to do with this track record that we were able to accomplish in Richmond. Because people started asking us, how did you do it in Richmond? And we wanted to share our model, our model of building a local movement and running local candidates without corporate money. And so I started talking to people and giving presentations and we decided, hey, if, if Gail runs a statewide campaign, her message would travel farther. You know, it's, you have that megaphone that a campaign gives you. So um, I, I've been running since last, May, I believe, is when I declared, and since we've been promoting progressive alliance building, 10 new progressive alliances have emerged all across California. Up in very 
important because we need we need people to feel empowered. We need to have that sister and brotherly sense of solidarity with each other because that's where our power comes from. One person is not going to do it. A handful isn't going to do it. Even if we had every single elected seat in the country filled with good progressives and we didn't have a movement, you know, a real movement of a local power building, um, we wouldn't have a real democracy. So we have to keep building that movement. And so I'm really glad that we have those 10 new, from San Diego to uh, North Coast People's Alliance, we have this new um, you know, surge of progressive alliances. And in the LA area, there's the South Bay LA People's Alliance, all modeled after the RPA, although autonomous, you know, they take what they what makes sense to their organization from the RPA model and then you know, build on their own. So um, that's that that encouragement to build um, their build an organization, a coalition of people working together and running corporate free candidates um, for local office is that one wing of my campaign. The second wing of my campaign is to actually win the lieutenant governor yes. seat. Yes. When I'm a lieutenant governor, I'll keep this organizing going, and I'll network all the progress. I'll, I'll, I won't network it all by myself. I'll help facilitate a network with all of you who are already built, you know, involved in this organization, that organization and will have this statewide power to pressure the legislature to get things done. Things like single-payer Medicare for all, and free public college, and banning fracking, supporting yeah. Prop 13, closing yeah. that. Progressive millionaires tax and you know getting an oil extraction tax without an oil severance tax without having any more drilling. We don't need any more offshore drilling. And we want, and we want the tax so high that it discourages them from even doing what they're doing now because it's got to stop. Yeah. So, come in, we could put into renewables and further uh, break away from fossil fuel dependency. Nice. So those are some things. Yeah. A statewide public bank. Oh, this will let us have the kind of a truly affordable housing that we need. We could give low interest loans to those those affordable housing developers that are really going to do the right thing, those nonprofit developers and such. We could also have infrastructure um, projects going through the public bank. We could have small business loans, worker owned co op. Um, so, the public bank is, it always captures people's attention. And I have to say that uh, someone just spoke to me, I think it was Stephanie, right before, like, some elected officials, they, you know, they get elected and then, you know, we supported them and all this, and then they're, they're you know, you never hear from them again. <laughs> and so she says, how are you going to, you know, assure us, or how are you going to do it so that this keeps, keeps on going? And that's a very, very good question, because it has to keep on going. And I have many ideas, everything from we could do progressive think tanks. Um, I'm thinking of doing a shadow cabinet of progressive representatives. Oh, yeah. it going so each of you are so important and you know as I used the the mayor's seat in Richmond I turned it into something it had never been before I turned it into this or this organizing seat this opportunity to you know facilitate or make space I should say for mobilizing the community and that made all the difference and that's what I want to use this lieutenant governor's seat for and you know it, it'll be our seat it won't be my seat it's going to be our seat so we're going to work together and uh, really keep this movement going in California um, you all know that uh, Bernie Sanders did such a great job yeah, nationally and yes. with this political revolution yes. that we're all standing for. And I'm so honored to have the endorsement of Bernie Sanders, our revolution. Yeah. Yeah. Having that national
congressional endorsement is just so, so important to me. Bernie came to Richmond in 2014 before he was um, running for mayor. Uh, running for mayor. <laughs> <laughs> he did run for mayor. We have no problem. We, we were both mayors. Um, before he ran for president. And he, um, he came to Richmond. I had the honor of... Uh, um, uh, introducing him and, and he endorsed me and two other progressives who were running on a local level then and he really talked up the RPA, the Richmond Progressive Alliance, as the kind of things that should happen everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, and he said, if you guys can beat Chevron with all their money, in 2014 Chevron spent three and a half million dollars to try and defeat us. And Bernie said, if you can defeat them, you will give inspiration to everyone. And that's just what we did. We all won. All the progressives won. All the Chevron candidates lost. <laughs> Our revolution endorsement, so many other endorsements from DSA's Green, also endorsed you Green Party, DSA Green Party. groups, Move yes, for Movement for a People's Party, and uh, so many, so many, many other groups. And I really appreciate Ralph Nader endorsed. That, uh, for those of you who uh, pay twenty-seven dollars, if you can see your way to making another twenty-three dollar contribution. We need more money because Gail, uh, can I say the numbers? Absolutely. Okay, <laughs> cash, cash on hand, I think it was something like 55,000? No, it was actually 77. Seven, 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 seven. Now we're like more like 140 oh, or 50. Okay. Yeah. Ed Hernandez and Eleni, I can't pronounce her. Kunalakis. Kunalakis. Eleni's father donated what? Two million or one point two point two million? Two point two million. So okay, we need more money. So what I'm asking is, people, to dig deep in your pockets. If the people that gave twenty-seven dollars could think about another twenty-three dollars, then we you can get a copy of Gail's book. I'm in the middle of reading it right now. It's fantastic. Uh, it talks all about her, you know, childhood and her young adulthood and how she became political and all she's done as mayor and as councilman member. So now I want to open it up to questions from the audience. How can people get involved in your campaign so that we can start letting other people know about your candidacy and who you are? So if you signed in um, on the sign-in sheet, um, there's a column, the far right column says, I will volunteer. Just put a little check mark there. If you already signed in and you, and you didn't check that column, but you now would like to, please do. We'll contact you. There are so many ways, texting, phone banking, canvassing, social media work. Um, we actually have a lot of cards here, and I know I'm going to give some cards to some people who want them that are going to be um, spreading, out some, uh, spreading around some campaign cards. So if people want cards before they leave, they should see me or Paul. Paul, raise your hand back there. Yeah. And he will make sure you all have uh, some materials. So, and say yeah, your website. And my website is galeforcalifornia.org, G-A-Y-L-E-F-O-R, california.org. Yes. Um, yeah, I wanted to ask Gail, is there any chance of getting Bernie to endorse your candidacy for lieutenant governor? Yeah, so, you know, I have the, the Our Revolution, the Bernie Sanders Our Revolution National Organization, which is a big thing, you know, that's kind of, you know, side by side with Bernie, but having his personal endorsement would be great as well. He endorsed me in 2014 on the, in, on the local level, and I am hoping, you know, actually someone just gave me a phone number to call at a house party I was at. Um, last night and said, you know, I called them up and they said if you call them, this particular uh, part of Bernie's team, um, and request that endorsement. I actually did write him a letter a while back, but maybe it's time again to uh, yeah. try again. So. Yeah. <laughs> and I think, I think we all need to tweet Bernie yeah. and we need to post on, whenever he makes a Facebook post, he's very good about that, we need to put as a comment, please endorse your friend, Gail McLaughlin. <laughs> Jane Sanders is very responsive. Oh, okay. And you know what? I get to share the stage with Jane Sanders on June 1st at the Left Forum in New York City. Oh, there you go. There you go. Because it's
it's Earth Day, and we're talking about like you know uh, fossil fuels and Chevron and fracking. Mm -hmm. um, I just was curious to hear your thoughts on animal agriculture and its impact on our uh, mm -hmm. environment and yeah. climate change. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I know that you're talking about like the whole vegan and vegetarian right. being a better way right. to go. Yeah, I think, you know, that's that's definitely true. And I know the way that animals are, um, are you know, treated and before they're often, you know, before they're killed is, is just outrageous. Oh. And the, and the um, hormones that they're given is, is just so heartbreaking. I've seen some of the movies. So I, you know, my... My perspective is that we have to change that, and uh, you know I think the the vegan and vegetarian lifestyle is a, a really healthy lifestyle. I I'm not a hundred percent vegetarian or vegan, but I often uh, like to go as much that route as I can. So thank you. Yeah. So, oh. Well, I'm also in the same camp, right? Because um, I don't know, something happened. I accidentally saw a video, and you can't. You can't unsee it, you right? Can't it. You yeah, can't erase it. You can't erase it from your brain. Yeah. And so um, the next time I was in, I was eating a piece of chicken. And as I was eating this piece of chicken, I started to feel bad for the chicken. <laughs> and I did, and then, and I. But I was really hungry. <laughs> and so I convinced myself that the chicken was probably already sick <laughs> and was dying anyway. And that made me feel better. <laughs> and then I, and I figured there's probably a lot of people just like me who would rather eat diseased chicken. <laughs> And then I had, I was like, oh, I have a great business idea. I'm going to open up restaurants for people who want to eat diseased chicken. And I'm going to call it El Polio Loco. <laughs> what if we in Culver City got a large auditorium, like vets? How many people in this room can get, like maybe, and we could get Gail here again. How many people in this room could get 10 people to come you, know, you and nine others, because if there's 30 people here, that would be 300 more votes for Gail, and then everybody goes home all on fire with their little neighborhood groups, and which is how democracy happens. Yes. Uh, how many people? Let's see a show of hands. Who's willing to come up with 10 people? I get two. <laughs> oh, come on, you guys. Plus myself. Gail, would you be? Are you? Would you debate the other three front runners? Oh, she did. Jimmy, did. if we set up a venue in Southern California, would you moderate? <gasps> yes! Yes! Yeah, yeah, I did. I did have. Um, and I debated at the Sacramento Press Club. Um, it was the three corporate Dems and the one. A uh, corporate Republican woman, and and so it was four corporate uh, candidates and myself, and I challenged them because uh, you got to ask a question as a candidate to the others, and so my question to them was, do you take corporate money, and if so, how do you justify it? Uh, and, yeah. they, <laughs> and they all talked around it. Well, I don't take this money from this group or that. I don't take oil money, but you know, they didn't. They didn't say anything else. You know, that that was one of their answers. Corporations are people too, Gail. Yeah. <laughs> the Republican candidate said, "I love corporations." So you know, it was it was a uh, um, yeah. It was run, it, the Sacramento Press Club, and the person running it was pretty much known to um, pre-establishment. But, um, yeah, if we had something with Jimmy um, moderating it, it would be a whole yeah. different no pressure, situation. Gail, yeah, for talking about public banking, because we're in such yes. a critical moment in history. And we're making for, for, To create a real viable solution to extract of Wall Street banks, <laughs> never before have we seen this much directed energy towards a solution. At right now in the in the country, there's about 15 legislations going through municipalities and state state legislatures. In California, we we have a movements in Los Angeles, San Francisco, Oakland. Um, here in Los Angeles, we have a unanimous support in city council to create a municipal public bank. Mm -hmm. So it's my my question isn't so much a, a question; it's an ask to incorporate in the public banking narrative the the ask the the need for a state bank as well as a municipal public bank yes. because in Los Angeles we. 
spend over a hundred million dollars in interest and fees that goes to Wall Street, yes. over three billion dollars towards debt services, and that can be cut in half so that we can fund affordable housing because we're in dire need yes. of that. So, so, so yeah, I would def and I do often um, incorporate the whole idea of our m municipal banks and regional banks. Um, Oakland, including Richmond, joined in on it, and um, and Berkeley. Um, so I did a study, or is in the process of bringing forward some data on it. And I know the LA Public Bank um, project is really gaining a lot of steam. So yes, we we need municipal, regional, and a statewide. And you're absolutely right; it cuts the in you know cuts the cost of of infrastructure projects. Uh, for example, in half, I know from being mayor, you float a bond and you end up paying twice as much mm -hmm. to pay yeah. that ba yeah. bond back. Yeah. So a public bank is, you know, 50% and is definitely the way to go. After the uh, um, financial collapse mm -hmm. and the banks were legally foreclosing on people right. and taking their homes mm -hmm. and you came up with this idea that you told the banks that if, unless they reduce the principal payments, Mm -hmm. You would seize their homes by eminent uh, domain. Yes. Yes. So it was, it was to acquire the mortgages, not the homes. Okay. So, yeah, that's um, during the foreclosure crisis. Richmond had about fifty percent of the mortgages wow. uh, underwater. You know, which means the price of the home was. Uh, or the price of the mortgage was way above what the yeah. current value of the home was. So we were telling the banks, the big banks, hey, you know, reduce these principles. And if you won't reduce the principles so our homeowners don't get foreclosed upon, you know, sell the, the mortgages to us, the city, and we'll reduce it. And if you won't voluntarily sell it, um, we will acquire it by eminent domain. <laughs> A really um, well-received um, initiative, <laughs> and uh, Wall Street, of course, was up in arms, and they went to Congress. And of course, we know our Congress is, you know, bought and sold. And Wall Street is there putting pressure on them, and and uh, they put uh, a new bill in place at the end of 2014 that said any public entity, any city or other public entity who acquired a mortgage by eminent domain would not get um, government insurance wow. for that mortgage. So wow. that, that set it aside for the time being, but with another Congress, you know, with a progressive Congress, and we know that the housing crisis continues, you know, we could resurrect that problem. Yes. municipal internet. Jerry, you had a little experience with Ron working on that. I'm very curious what you think about that for the state. How about it? I think it's a, a wonderful idea. What we have um, in Richmond, what we were able to do, there's this company that um, put together, it's called Internet Archives, I think is the name of the group. They put these um, these antennas on top of high buildings in various neighborhoods, and then it allows um, that neighborhood to have free broadband, and so um, or free internet, I should say. And so um, we did that in a few of our neighborhoods so that we could give our you know as much free internet as possible. But I would love to see free municipal broadband for the whole city, for the whole state. Yeah. Um, if I'm elected to the state senate, you and I would be working together because you would be the president of the senate. That's right. Yeah. So my question is, um, what, uh, um, in terms of legislation such as getting things like Medicare for all, um, uh, banning fracking and the like, and getting this progressive agenda forward, would you be able to twist arms of other state senators? You know, um, if, for instance. I decide to introduce a new single payer bill, for oh, instance. Absolutely. You introduce that bill and we will advertise it, we will mobilize around it. I'm sure you will be an organizer, um, state, st uh, state senator, I would be an organizer, lieutenant governor, and we will <laughs> combine with everybody and we will pressure those other members of the Senate to do what the people need and to bring forward the people's <laughs> Okay.
This has been another live edition of the Robust Opposition. Please share this video. Please donate to J Gail. Please subscribe to Jimmy Dore. And please keep fighting. <laughs> yeah.